another celebration with Falling Brook Heights Baptist Church at the Center. We encourage you to prepare your heart, mind, and soul for a time of reflection, learning, and prayer. If you have any questions, or if you're just looking to chat, check out our website, churchatthecenter.com. And now, let's worship. Merry Christmas. We're waiting. The Advent is the season of waiting. And as we wait on the Lord, as we seek to understand His will, even through this Christmas, so many years later, I pray that today you'll experience through our singing, through our prayer, through time together, the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Christmas is coming and today is our third Sunday of Advent. We encourage you to light a candle perhaps on your own Advent wreath so we can together, though apart, celebrate this wonderful season of His coming. In Advent, we wait joyfully with great anticipation for the gift of Jesus and the great delights of Christmas. Of course, Jesus gives us numerous other gifts of love, eternal life, hope, joy, and peace through the Holy Spirit. Today, we think about the simple attendees of Christmas. Encouraged by angels, the shepherds, though shaken, had great courage to go see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. Today, we light the candles of hope and peace, and we light the candle of joy. As we do, let us remember the good news of Jesus' birth has power to bring us great joy this Christmas. Our joy does not need to be dependent on what is going on in our life, in our world, or others. It doesn't depend on the gifts we give or the gifts we find under the tree. No earthly thing can ever give us a complete joy. Our joy comes from God, that joy that flooded the hearts of the shepherds, the angels, the wise men, the hosts of heaven, and Mary and Joseph is the joy that still has the power to overwhelm our hearts with rejoicing. Let's pray. Father, you offer joy to us now if we know you and recognize Jesus as our Savior and Lord. You gave us a reason to celebrate when you came. Jesus, when you came to dwell among us, you still forg forgive our sins and give us eternal life when we believe in you. We confess that ultimate joy doesn't come from our jobs, family, or relationship. No, our joy is a gift. It is the gift that you gave us that first Christmas in Jesus Christ. Our joy is from Jesus Christ. Flood our hearts with joy this Advent season as we reflect on the good news of Jesus' birth. In Jesus' name we, we pray, amen. Sweet. 
church, the weather is getting colder and we've even had snow. So yes, Christmas is approaching COVID or no COVID. We've heard a lot of bad news about this pandemic, but there is good news. You are powerful in Christ and you can make a difference. This Christmas, our church is supporting two missions projects to help feed vulnerable families, one locally and one internationally. If you go to our website and click on missions, you'll find more information under the tab called Help Feed Vulnerable Families. Locally, we're continuing our tradition of providing gift cards to families in need in our community. This can make all the difference in making the season special for these families by freeing up some funds for the little extras, including purchasing Christmas gifts for their children. You can make gift card donations online, or if you prefer, send gift cards to our church's mailing address. Internationally, we're supplying food baskets to families in South Sudan, Lebanon, and Latin America, where food insecurity is a serious issue. A donation of just $85 is enough to feed a family and fill a food basket that will feed a family for a month. Our goal is to raise enough to feed at least 24 families. May God bless you as you prayerfully consider giving as the Lord leads. Hi church, it's Matthew Yule here, and I'm speaking to you today in my role as council chair. I'd like to tell you about our upcoming AGM being held on February 7th online. So I know typically we have a church service and then we all scramble to put the tables together and we enjoy lunch and then have our AGM. But this year we'll be doing it online. So I have a great trade off for you though, no lunch, but you can do the AGM in your pajamas. So that's not bad, right? Look forward to more announcements and information in the coming weeks on how you can register to attend, what to expect, and other information that's important for you. I'm really looking forward to our AGM this year. It's been a great year, challenging, but a lot of learning and a lot of things to look forward to in 2021. So again, look forward to the coming weeks when we'll have more information on our AGM. Until then, talk to you soon and have a great day. Be transported to another time. This Christmas, we're having a traditional Christmas window at the Reach. Come and see when hope came down. It's a life-size nativity like you've never seen before. You can view it from the Reach window anytime, Sunday, December 13 to January 9th. On weekday evenings and weekends, there'll be live vignettes and live action pop-up. The Reach is located at 1666 Kingston Road, on the north side of Kingston Road, just west of Birchmount in Scarborough. For more information, check out churchatthecenter.com. Be reminded that hope is yours to have. Hey kids, Evan here. I got a stretch lesson for you today. It's almost Christmas. Are you excited? Are you counting down the days? Rachel and I am, we're looking forward to it. And as we're getting closer and closer to Christmas, there might be some big excitement and some hustle and bustle and tons of stuff going on around you. And it can be so much fun, but it can also be a bit tough sometimes. And one of the things that we can remember at this time is God can give us peace, that God and Jesus give us peace. And it talks about this in the Bible. It even predicts this is going to happen. It says this in the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 6. It says, For a child is born to us, a son is given to us. The son is Jesus. And, the, and he will be called, and it continues on, it says, He will be called the Prince of Peace. God sending Jesus, his son, to be the Prince of Peace in this world. He is going to give peace to those who believe in Him. And all we have to do is pray. Let's pray. Lord Heavenly Father, we pray that You can give us peace at this time through all the hustle and bustle and things going on around us, that You can be with us and give us peace. Give our families peace, Lord. And we pray for guidance and safety, protection, Lord, and that You will be with us each and every day. Lord Heavenly Father, we pray these things in Your name. Amen. Christmas 2020 is going to be a Christmas 
like no other. But its impact, positively or negatively, is really up to you. Christmas 2020 could be life-changing if you're willing to delve deeper into God's plan for humanity, God's plan for you. Christmas 2020, is this the year that you begin an eternal adventure with the center of Christmas with Jesus himself? Is this the year that you return to your Lord and to resume where perhaps you've left off for a while? Or perhaps is this this year in which you experience the depth of, depth of peace and hope and love and joy like you've never experienced before? Today, let's consider the common attendees of Christmas, the shepherds. My name is Journey, and today I'm going to read from the Bible, Luke chapter 2, verse 8 to 20. The shepherds and the angels, and there were shepherds living out in the, in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord showed around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of joy, great joy, that will be for all the, for all the people. Today in the town of David, David, a Savior, has been born to you. He is Christ. The Lord, this this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby, baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel, raising God and saying, "Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to men on whose his favor rests." When the angels had left them, gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, "Let's go to Bethlehem and see things." see this thing that has happened, which which the Lord has told us about. So they hur- hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. When they had seen him, they spread the, the wor- word concerning what has been told told about about this about this, this child. And all who heard it, it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But, they, but Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were, were just as they, they, they had been told. Merry Christmas, everyone. Thank you. If the Magi are the strangest and the angels the most spectacular, the shepherds are the simplest attendees of Christ's birth. After all, When Jesus was born, he was laid in a manger, in a a feeding trough, in a place where they put hay or grains for lambs, most likely, or for goats or for sheep or oxen to eat from. Shepherds. Shepherds are so interesting. We try to find an analogy in our society. Some have said they were like the garbage collectors of our world Some have said that they were the laborers of our world. But I don't think that we can go any further than the Bible's 5,000-year record and go beyond shepherds. After all, we still have shepherds in our world. And they are significantly unique. Let's consider shepherds for a moment. The Bible has a lot to say about shepherds. There's over 200 references to shepherds in the Bible. When we look at the shepherds of the Bible, there's a few keystone passages. In the Psalms, it's found in Psalm 74 and 79 and Psalm 95 and Psalm 100. This statement, know that the Lord is God. He made us. We are his people and the sheep of his Pasture. The, the analogy in this earth, this globe, this planet we live on is that it's a pasture and we're sheep. In the Bible, there's two references that we have often been drawn to about sheep and shepherds. The first one that we hear perhaps more than any other text is Psalm 23. Psalm 23 is brilliant in part because Psalm 23 was composed by a shepherd king. This is a man who knew sheep. 
spent time with sheep, uh, stayed overnight caring for sheep, killed a lion and a bear for the sheep. And this is what King David of Israel wrote. Say it with me, if you will. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. It's this Psalm 23 that perhaps David was, uh, was, as he wrote it, even though he couldn't articulate it, was thinking about a son of David to come, that he was promised in the Davidic covenant. And perhaps this was the Psalm that Jesus was thinking of when he said in John 10, I have come that God's sheep may have life and have it to the full. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me just as the father knows me and I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. So this Christ coming event, surrounded by the simplest of people, is filled with seismic importance. Of all the participants of Christmas, of Christ's coming, shepherds were the only ones who didn't know it was going to happen. You see, Zechariah and Elizabeth knew that Jesus was going to be born. John, infant John, knew before he was born that Jesus was coming. Mary and Joseph, of course, knew that Jesus was coming. Mary in particular. Herod knew from the chief priests who told him that the Messiah, the Christ, was coming. The teachers of the law knew. Simeon knew. The Magi knew. They were following his star. The angels, of course, knew. Only the shepherds are the ones who are truly surprised, truly shocked with its arrival. Shepherds are our representatives. You and I, we're shepherds. We're also sheep. So let's think about what a shepherd would say based on scripture with creative license. I, I am a shepherd. That's what I do. My identity, just like second born Abel, our forefather Moses, the great King David, prophet Amos. I am proud to be a shepherd, even though we are considered lowly and common. But Persian wise men came and went eastward. King Herod boiled in jealousy, died and replaced by his sons. Priests Zechariah and Elizabeth have gone to be with their ancestors. Tax collectors and payers went home. Even the family, Mary, Joseph and Yeshua went to Egypt. Only I, only we remained. I will never forget that night, never. The sky was brighter than the day. Holy ones moved through its brilliance, singing awesome songs of joy and the clear message, Go, the Great One favors you. Though trembling with fear, we went. In the restless shadows of the dark night, we found the stable, hesitated, unsure of a welcome. When the Father came out of the door, we had to speak. Ah, we've uh, come to see a newborn baby. He too, taken aback, motioned us in. We raise sheep all year long. Our flock are the chosen ones used at the temple for Passover, at the redemption feast. Our work makes us unclean, but our lambs take away sin. They are redemption offerings. At least they were. We didn't know that night, but know now, 33 years later. When we saw the baby, our vocation is now fulfilled. We praised, celebrated, 
worshipped, and proclaimed he who was and is the sacrificial lamb who takes away the sin of the world and the great shepherd who cares for his sheep. Oh, yes. Of all the participants of Jesus' birth, shepherds are the ones that I most understand. They're the ones that I get the most. And it's not just because I'm the son of a farmer, the son of a shepherd. I, I get the connection with animals. I connect that, I, I understand their gritty, essential, authentic, down to earth status that they shared with their sheep. I've had an opportunity to be in Israel, and the time that I was there when I was just 11 years old was a time in which we saw Bedouin shepherds. And as I reflect upon it throughout the years, it was the Bedouin shepherds that made Israel come alive to me, authentically caring for their sheep. Probably, though, the most greatest reason why you and I would associate with the shepherds at Christmas is because we're sheep. So ponder with me the simplest yet the most significant Christmas scene. And let's start this way. Might the shepherds tell us sheep that we should follow Christ because he is the great son of God. He is our great shepherd. Might the shepherds remind us sheep, especially when we are lost, who we are. Because every single one of us acts sometimes like we are the shepherd as sheep. That we know better. That we can go our own way. That we can determine without anyone else's influence the way to safer pasture. We've all been there. We've all been the lost sheep. And everyone at times feels, or perhaps is, low and downtrodden and cold and forgotten and used and tired and futile and maligned and set aside. <sighs> perhaps you feel, perhaps you are in one of these places, in this God's pasture of life. So let me say that it's okay to stop. It's okay to pause, to admit your lostness, whether you're one of the sheep that thinks you know everything that's right to do without a shepherd. It's okay to pause and realize that you can't do it by yourself. And it's okay also to tear up, to weep, to feel the heaviness of life, to feel despair and desperation. But just don't stay there. Don't stay lost. Jesus came to find you. He didn't come that you would remain lost. After all, the angels are coming. They're coming to tell us goodwill amongst mankind. That God's favor is with us, especially at Christmas. Christmas 2020 is going to be a Christmas like no other. But what happens this year, positively or negatively, how it impacts you is really up to you. Christmas 2020 could be life-changing if you're willing to delve deeper into God's plan for you, for humanity. So let me ask, do you want to begin an adventure? Do you want to be like one of those shepherds who, after hearing this call today, goes to search for the baby? Giving up things in your life, regardless of what you've done before, regardless of whether you've been in the church for 50 years or for five minutes. Do you want to start a relationship with the Son of God? In just a few moments, we'll pray. If you're willing to do so, you can just follow the prayer. But I also want to ask you, as perhaps a seasoned shepherd, a person who's been lost before and found, where are you? 
Do you feel like you are kneeling at the stable because you have found God and God has found you? Or do you feel as though you're way out in the pasture? Pasture of life. Perhaps today you feel what we've celebrated already, the hope that Jesus Christ came to give. The peace that he offers us through his death on the cross. And the joy that is our salvation. Perhaps you're feeling that and as a shepherd you want to, just as the story tells us, to tell, all, tell others all about this great provision God has made for us. We're going to pray in just a moment. But before we do so, I just wanted to say, just after I'm finished, we're going to have a courage vignette. We had a courage campaign a few weeks ago. And we've been inspired to have pictures of courage from, from some folks in our congregation. So you'll have the opportunity to hear a courage vignette. As well, we have prayer all throughout the week. Of course, you're invited to pray individually on your own as you read scripture and as you reflect on it. You can connect with me and I'll pray with you and for you as it's my delight to do so. But every Wednesday at 9.50, we're having a Zoom prayer time. Our Zoom prayer time, led by our deacon, Pat, is an opportunity, even if you can just come for two minutes or five minutes or ten minutes, for us to pray for you. You can come in and, with the number that's on the bottom of the screen right now. You can use this Zoom number to come in and we'll pray for you, even if you just have... 10 minutes in your day to come and be prayed for and then go. We will pray for an hour from 10 to 11. But if you can swing by to that Zoom meeting, you will be refreshed. Let's pray together. God, I thank you for the way that you sent your son into the world. I thank you for this great message that you give us through all aspects of this brilliant story. We today thank you for the shepherds, the commoners, the simplest attendees of Christmas, we could say. And I pray, God, that you'll open our hearts to understand that we are both sheep that need your guidance, just as Psalm 23 says, and that also in Christ we become shepherds to lead others in you. I pray, Lord God, for any this morning that have heard this message. I pray for them. And I pray, Lord God, that they will simply say, God, please forgive me. I've made a mess at times. I've even run off and thought that I could do whatever I want in pride and arrogance. Forgive me, God, I pray. And help me to understand that you accept me when I turn to you. God, please enter into my life, into my soul. Send your Holy Spirit into my life. Come, Lord Jesus. Even though I know I don't have all the answers, direct me to your word. I accept you today. We pray as well, too, Lord God, for those who have lost their way. We sheep, all of us at some point in life, who simply wander away from the great shepherd and face bears and lions, the ravages of life. Please help us, Lord God, in these ravages that we experience. And please guide us back to you. Come get us, Lord Jesus. We respond back to you and cry out for you. And Lord God, we thank you this morning as we praise and sing. We thank you, God, for giving us the hope that you give us in Jesus Christ, that we celebrate your peace in us, and we delight in the joy of our salvation. Continue to guide and direct us to love one another and love you. We pray all of this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Hello, church. Evan and Rachel here 
And we've really enjoyed the Courage Campaign series, and we have some Courage stories for you that we would like to share. Life is full of moments that take courage. While you're in it, you don't generally think of you need to have courage. Um, and my life over the past four or five years has required a lot of courage, although I don't really think of it as that way. Starting March 18, 2016, I collapsed at work and had no motor function and could not move my legs. I was brought to the hospital and had a full body MRI done, a CT scan, a lot of blood work. And the next morning I was discharged and sent home because I was deemed stable, but they didn't really know what was wrong with me. A week later on Easter Monday, I was back in the hospital again. They did a lumbar puncture and another CT scan and still didn't really know what was wrong with me. Um, but at that point, they found out that I didn't have any sensory from below my knees. I couldn't feel anything. If you poked my leg, I could tell something was there, but I couldn't tell if it was hot or cold or sharp or caused any pain, which greatly affected my ability to walk. I went back to work in the middle of May and a couple days after I returned to work, I got a phone call from my family doctor saying that the mass that they had found on my thyroid had grown and the rate it was growing was very worrisome and I needed to go and get a biopsy to see if I had cancer. So on top of not really being able to function, I had to get a biopsy, which thankfully was negative and I didn't have cancer. But because of how large the mass was, I was scheduled for surgery. Before I made it to surgery in July 2016, I was hospitalized for three days because I had lost complete motor function of my legs again. In September 2016, I had surgery to remove half of my thyroid and the mass, to which when the doctor went to my parents saying the surgery was done, he told them that he had no idea how I was able to function and swallow and eat because he had never seen a mass that was that large in someone of my size. And I remember waking up from the surgery and the nurses telling me that I needed to drink water or eat ice chips. So my dad gave me an ice chip and I swallowed and looked at him and said, hey, I can swallow again and had probably the biggest smile I had had in a long time. Following that surgery, I went home to my parents because it wasn't safe for me to live on my own. I remember just feeling like I wasn't living. I was just kind of there. If you ever go to my parents' house, you will see words everywhere. From the welcome to the we have seen his glory on the one wall, but the one word that always sticks out to me is the word joy. And that word is all over my parents' house. It's my middle name as well. But in mid-November, I just remember feeling really low. And I was sitting in my parents' family room, which has, I think, four instances of the word joy. And I just felt like that was what I needed. I needed to find joy. Even though life was hard, I didn't really know what was going to be happening or if I'd lose motor function again, but I knew I needed to find joy. So I went to Bible Gateway, and the one that stuck out to me was Colossians 1.11, which I looked up. And in the complete Jewish Bible states this. We pray that you will be continually strengthened with all the power that comes from his glorious might so that you will be able to persevere and be patient in any situation joyfully. Um, and then I also looked it up in the message and it says this. We pray that you'll have the strength to stick it out over the long haul 
not the grim strength of gritting your teeth, but the glory strength God gives. It is strength that endures the unendurable and spills over into joy, thanking the Father who makes us strong enough to take part in everything bright and beautiful that he has for us. Those were the verses that stuck with me over the next probably two years. And I was doing okay. January, February 2018, I got a call from another one of my doctors saying that my white blood cell count was incredibly low. So in March 2018, I started intravenous immunoglobulin treatments and those saved my life. I am doing so much better today. I went through two years of the treatments, met Evan during them, um, have had amazing support and they've been able to help me find the joy and the courage that I've needed. And I'm now finished with the IVIG treatments, thankfully, but I still every day fight with some good days and some bad days, but I know because of God, I will always have the joy and the courage needed. And if I ever lose it, I know I always have people who can help me find it and will be there and they can show me again how strong I am and give me the courage that I need to keep going. Wow, what an amazing story of joy and courage and faithfulness and trust in the Lord that we heard from Rachel. And I know I can be inspired from it and I can take courage and find courage from what Rachel shared, just as I hope all of you do as well. And there are so many verses in the Bible that talk about courage and joy and having hope and trusting in the Lord. Rachel shared two of them today and Pastor Ken has shared others in his series on courage. And one that really sticks out to me is Joshua 1, 8 and 9. Be strong and be courageous. Those words are powerful and stories like Rachel's can help give us courage and hope and know that we can trust in the Lord to provide us with all that we need. Thank you for joining us for this service. For more information, visit our website, churchatthecenter.com. God bless. God bless.